Good morning, students. Today we will begin with a new lesson in maths, that is data handling. In your day-to-day -day life, you might have come across information related to marks scored by students in your class in a particular subject or the number of goals scored by your team or number of storybooks read by each of your siblings. Now this is known as data and data is the collection of information in the form of numerical figures. So if we consider the first example that I have uh, cited here, the marks scored by students in the class in a science test. So let's assume that there is a class of students and the strength of this class is 50. So if we consider that the students have scored from 0 to 50, these are the marks that they have scored and they are expressed in numbers. So the information is in the form of numerical figures and this is the data that we have collected in the subject science from the class of 50 students. Usually the information that is available to us is in the unorganized form. So we uh, refer to statistics, which is a branch of science, and this deals with the collection, classification, tabulation, and interpretation of numerical data. The information when we collect it and present it randomly, then we say this information is raw data. And uh, in the example that I had given earlier, this is a unorganized form or the data was in the unorganized form wherein the numbers are just taken randomly. So we need to arrange the data in order to study the features. So for that, we have to present the data. So that is what we are going to learn in this lesson, how we can present the raw data so that we can study its salient features. Data can be represented so that it can be made more meaningful and we can understand it easier. So it can be represented in the form of a tabular column or a pictorial form or a graphical form. So we will discuss each of these in a little detail. In order to uh, draw meaningful inferences or conclusions, we need to organize the data systematically. Now here what is given to us is the raw data which is in the unorganized form. So here we have the subjects which are listed and uh, we have to find out now how many students like music or art or math or science. So just by looking at this it would not be easy. So in order to organize this data what we do is we uh, prepare a frequency distribution table. Now when we prepare a frequency distribution table, we will tabulate the data that is given. So we have the subjects, we will do the tally marks and then we will find the number of students who like that particular subject. Since it is not easy to answer the questions as to which would be the most liked subject or the one least liked by the students, we need to uh, complete this frequency distribution table. And for this, we will use tally marks. Now we have to look at the raw data and follow it. So here the first subject is music. So for every data that is given, we are going to put a tally mark for the uh, respective subject. So we have art, then we have maths, then we have music again, science, English, art, music, art, science, music, science, maths, English, maths, maths, art, maths. Now on the fifth one, we are not going to put a tally again here, but when it is the fifth tally mark, we are going to strike off 
this so the fifth line is always going to be oblique and this is going to be one group of tally marks so we don't put the fifth mark at the side we don't make a group of five in five straight tally marks we take a oblique line across the four and this becomes one group of tally marks So we can continue putting the tally marks for every subsequent subject and in this way we will have completed the tally. Please pay attention that every time you have done four tally marks, the fifth tally mark is going to be an oblique line. So you will get a group of five tally marks and then you proceed forward. forward. For every fifth tally mark, see that you strike off a group of four. Now the next thing we do is we are going to count the tally marks. So instead of counting it as one, two, three, four, five, we know that one which is striked off is a group of five. So we just say five, six, seven, eight. So we get eight students. But the next one again, it is five plus two. So it is seven. Next one, it is five plus one, six. 5 plus 1, 6 for science and 5 for English. So this has become easier to tabulate this data. We have organized this data and now it has become simpler for us to say that, okay, there are eight students whose uh, favorite subject is music and of all the subjects, the least liked is English. So the frequency distribution table is used uh, so that we can uh, find out uh, the number of times a particular entry occurs. Data can also be organized in the form of bar graphs. A bar graph is a pictorial representation of data in which rectangular bars of uniform width are drawn with equal spacing between them on one axis, which is usually the x axis, and the value of the variable is shown on the y axis now when we say bars of uniform width it the how uh, broad the bars are needs to be the same also the space between the bar has to be equal now how can we use this uh, bar graph to organize the data so in this case we have taken the number of girls and the number of boys studying in uh, class 7 in the year 2016 so we've seen in 2016, the number of girls who studied in class 7 was 30 and the number of boys were 20. For the next year, in 2017, the, there were 25 girls and there were 25 boys. In 2018, there were 20 girls and there were 25 boys. And in 2019, there were 15 girls and 20, oh, sorry, 35 boys so looking at uh, what is given so on the x axis what is given to us is the year and in on the y axis it is the number of students who were studying in that particular class so in this way we can organize the data so that it becomes easier to interpret it sometimes however uh, we have to deal with a large data. For example, let us consider the marks out of 50 which are obtained by 50 students in maths in class 8. Now, if we make a frequency distribution table for each observation, then the table would be too long. So, for convenience, we make groups of observations like say 0 to 10 or 10 to 20 and so on. And in this way, we can obtain a frequency distribution of the number of observations falling in each group. So here we can see what we have done is, uh, since the lowest mark that has been obtained is 16, we start with the group of 15 to 20. So uh, we will make the groups and since we have uh, made groups this is called as a grouped frequency distribution table. In the grouped uh, frequency distribution table, each of the groups 15 to 20, 20 to 25, this is called the class interval or the class. 
in 15 to 20 class interval 15 is called the lower class limit and 20 is called the upper class limit the common observations like 20 which is occurring in uh, the first group and then in the second group this is called the common observation so you can see this 20 occurring in the first and the second 25 in the second and the third so what it means is the common observations belong to the higher class interval so 25 will belong in the class interval 25 to 30 now again I'll say this 15 is the lower class limit and 20 is the upper class limit however when we have to put in the tally marks we will consider 15 16 17 18 19 in this group 20 will be considered in the next group it will go to the next higher group okay uh, so again here it will be 20 21 22 23 24 and 25 will go to the next higher class interval Now once we have done the groups, we have to remember here that while we are making the groups, the difference between the upper class limit and the lower class limit for each class interval is equal. So the width of the class interval needs to be equal. In this case, 15, uh, 20 minus 15, we will get 5. 25 minus 20, we will get 5. So that is the width of the class interval and this needs to be equal throughout. So once we look at this raw data here and we do our tally marks, we will get the frequency of uh, uh, this uh, data. Let us consider uh, the group frequency distribution table again. Now here they have given us a group frequency distribution of the marks obtained by 60 students in maths test. So in the class interval, what we have done is that we have taken the uh, number of uh, the marks that have, uh, the students have obtained and the frequency refers to the number of students who have got these marks. The total students is 60. So to represent this data, we will use what is known as the histogram. Now the histogram is a little different from the bar graph that we discussed previously. In the sense, if you look between each bar, there is no space. Now the reason why we don't leave space in histograms is because there is no gap between the class interval so it is 0 to 10 and 10 to 20 so there is 10 in both of the class intervals so we cannot leave a gap clear so histogram is different from a bar graph in the sense there is no gap between the bars and we don't keep a gap between the bars because we do not have a gap between the class interval so following this we will now represent this data so we have the marks from 0 to 10 so we plot the marks of the students on the x-axis so you will make equal markings please make sure that the width is equal only remember that there is no space so 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 and 50 to 60 next look at the number of students that is the frequency that is given here the number of students is plotted on the y-axis so 0 to 10 we have two students so you will make a marking here so we've got two students 10 to 20 we have 10 students 20 to 30 we have 21 students 30 to 40 we have 19 students 40 to 50 we have 7 students and 50 to 60 we have one student so this is how we will represent the data using a histogram let us now see how we can use a circle graph or a pie chart to represent data. Now a circle graph, it shows the relationship between the whole, which is the entire circle and its parts. The whole circle is divided into sectors. It is divided into different parts and the size of each sector is proportional to the information that it represents. Now to understand this better, let us look at an example. Now the given pie chart shows the expenditure on various items and savings of a family during a month. 
Now, if you remember what we said previously, the whole is divided into different sectors, which are paths, and each sector represents information. So here, this is exactly what is given to us. The whole is divided into paths, and each part is referring to certain information. So based on this, questions are asked, on which item was expenditure maximum? So if we look at this, we will find that expenditure is maximum on food. Expenditure on which item is equal to the total savings of the family? So let's look at what is the savings first. Savings is 15% and is there any other sector which is equal to 15%? Yes, it is education for children. So that means expenditure on education of children is the same as the savings of the family. Now, if the monthly saving of the family is rupees 3000, what is the monthly expenditure on clothes? So clothes, how much are they spending on clothes? 10%. Now, to find the percentage, what do we do? We will take 3000, which is the saving of the family. So with, to find the percentage, we will do 3000 multiplied by 10 divided by 15. And this is how we will get 2000 which is the monthly uh, expenditure on clothes. So looking at each sector and the information that it represents, we can then interpret the data. Now, what if you are asked to draw a circle graph or a pie chart based on the data given? For example, the data given to you is the time spent by a student during the day. These are the activities that the child or the student is doing throughout the day and you have to draw the pie chart, then what would you do? Now we know that in a day there are 24 hours. So first we need to find the fraction of each of the activity with respect to the whole day and then we will find the angle subtended by that activity to draw the pie chart. So let's look at the raw data that is given to us. It is told to us that the student sleeps for eight hours, goes to school for six hours, does his homework in four hours, plays for four hours, and some does other activities for the next two hours. Now to represent this data, first we need to organize it. So we will uh, tabulate the data into activity, the different activities that the child indulges in, the number of hours that he spends on each activity and now we need to find the fraction of each activity with respect to the whole day so eight hours of total 24 hours so once you reduce the fraction you will get the total fractional value of the amount of hours or the time that he spends in 24 hours on this particular activity Now, once you find the fraction, what you need to do next is you need to find the central angle. Now, to find the central angle, what we are going to do is we are going to multiply the fraction that we have got after we have taken the amount of hours that the child has spent on doing a certain activity uh, as per the number of hours present in a day. So we take the fraction and we are going to multiply it by 360 degrees. The reason is that the total angle at the center of the circle is 360 degrees. You know, right, that the whole rotation of the circle is equal to 360 degrees. So uh, multiplying uh, one third by 360 degree, you will get 120 degrees. In the same way, you will find the central angle for each of the activity that the child has indulged in. Now to draw the pie chart, first we need to draw a circle. Now to draw the circle, we will take any convenient radius. So you may take a radius, with whatever radius you want to take. Mark the center of the circle and then you draw the circle. Once you have drawn the circle, start with one activity. In the first case, uh, the number of hours that the child spent in sleeping was 8 hours and the angle that we got was 120 degrees. 
So using the protector and keeping it at the center point, we will draw an angle of measure 120 degrees. So we will mark 120 degrees. So that is the amount of time that he has spent and we have shown it here on the pie chart. In the same way, we are going to again place the protector on the central point and then mark the angle of the measure that we have got in the previous step. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. So students, do practice, keep practicing and surely the amount of time that you put in in learning will reap great benefits for you.